Hi guys, here is another short video of an African folktale story about a wicked prince. Please subscribe and turn on notifications bell. Thanks for watching, he stared at me from the darkness, his smile too white, teeth too sharp. The prince didn't look human anymore, my name is Ayo, and I used to live in a small village near the banks of the river. We all knew about Prince Keto, the king's son, but no one spoke his name out loud. Not anymore, when he was a boy, Prince Keto was like the other children. He played with us sometimes when he visited the village. But as he grew older, something changed. The story started spreading, whispers of the strange things he did in the palace. Things no one wanted to believe, the elders said his mother died giving birth to him, and he was cursed because of it. But I didn't believe in curses. Not until I saw what he became, one night, I was out by the river, gathering herbs for my mother. I was alone, but it was peaceful. The sound of the water always made me feel calm. Suddenly, I heard someone singing. It was soft, almost like a hum, but it echoed in a way that sent a shiver down my spine. The sky was dark, but the moon was bright enough to see shapes in the distance, that's when I saw him, Prince Keto stood by the water, his back to me, but I knew it was him. He wore the royal colors, his clothes shimmering in the moonlight. At first, I thought he was just staring into the water, maybe lost in thought. But then he laughed, a low, terrible laugh that didn't sound like it should come from a man, I froze, trying not to make a sound, but my foot slipped, and the rustle of leaves gave me away. He turned slowly, and I saw his face. His eyes, they were black, like there was nothing behind them. And a smile, it was stretched too wide, too sharp, like his teeth had been fired down to points. It wasn't a human smile, Eo, he said, his voice cold and hollow, come closer. I wanted to run, but my legs wouldn't move. It was like my body had betrayed me. I stood there, trembling, as he took a step toward me. His feet didn't make a sound on the ground, like he wasn't touching it at all, you shouldn't be here, he whispered. This is not for you to see. I managed to shake my head, backing away slowly, but he followed, his eyes never leaving mine. And then, behind him, I saw them, shadows in the water, faces half submerged, their mouths open in silent screams. I realized then why he had come to the river. The people in the village who disappeared, the ones no one ever found, they were his, Ron, one of the faces mouthed at me, but no sound came out, my heart pounded in my chest as I turned and sprinted back toward the village. I didn't stop until I was home, my breath ragged and my skin cold with fear. I never went near the river again. No one did. Not after that night, they say Prince Keto still walks by the river, searching for more. More to take. More to drown in the black water. I don't know what he is anymore, but he's not human. He's something else, something darker, and I pray I never see him again, but sometimes, when the wind is quiet, and the moon is full, I hear that same soft humming. And I know he's near.